Welcome to another edition of Peterson Automotive Museum Deep Dives. Today we're going to be examining the Peterson Museum's 1922 Leech. During the 1920s, there were a few manufacturers that called Southern California home. One of them was Leach. Martin Andrew Leach built cars for the Southern California market, which means that they were unusually stylish, unusually expressive, unusually large, and they were unusually well suited for the Southern California market. Today we call it a hard top, but back in the late teens and early 20s, the body style that Leach innovated was called a California top. And that's because it had a wide open space in the middle where all the windows were down and the pillar could be swung out of the way. And they did that so that they could get an unobstructed view of what was going on outside. And theoretically, people who were walking along the sidewalk could look at you and get an unobstructed view of you and what you were doing and the lucky person in this car. Now this car was very expensive for the day. It cost 5,500 early 1920s dollars when you could get a Ford Model T for under 300. It was just a vast amount of money. And it was favored by silent film stars. Gloria Swanson advertised them, uh, Tom Mix advertised them, and any number of others. Uh, it really exemplified what Southern California and Hollywood was all about which was motoring in grand style, uh, motoring in, in the kind of luxury that, that only money could buy. Uh, and this car in its day was extremely luxurious. It was also sporting. It had things like what they call cycle fenders or helmet fenders, which is to say fenders that hug the wheels. It had disc wheels, which today people like the idea of putting wire wheel clip-ons on cars, uh, but back in the day, disc wheels were actually favored because it gave it a hint of aerodynamics. Uh, it still employed side-mounted spares, but it did away with running boards and instead used step plates, each of which had their own little light. And if the battery were to be hooked up and I were to open the door, the light would go on for this one, open the back door and this light would go on. It was a very civilized way of getting into your very expensive car. One of the interesting things about the Leech was, actually became what it was not. Um, Martin Leech was going to go into partnership with Harry Miller, uh, who built Miller race cars and, and um, uh, Miller racing engines for boats and things. Um, the idea was for Miller to make a single overhead cam, six cylinder engine that would put out an astounding amount of horsepower for the day. And he did, and a few leeches were actually delivered with the Miller engine. But the Miller engine was somewhat under-engineered and every one of them experienced some catastrophic mechanical failure. That meant that Leach had to take all of those back on warranty and retrofit them with plain old everyday Continental flathead engines. Now I say Continental uh, only because the company had no relationship at all to Ford or Lincoln. It was a firm that built only engines and later some automobiles and, and airplane engines. So this car had a, a very um, plebeian, very, very um, pedestrian six-cylinder flathead engine uh, that was theoretically built specially to leach specifications but really didn't dif differ entirely from uh, engines that you could get in any number of cars that were built that year. What Martin Leach did uh, is the year after this car was built he slashed prices. They went from 5500 to 4500 but the damage had been done to the reputation because of the Miller engines and the fact that they had to take so many back. And so he was no longer able to produce entire vehicles, including the chassis and, and the running gear on up. But what he was known for was his coach building bodies. And he ended up supplying just the bodies to other manufacturers. And you could have at the time bought a car with a leech body, with leech coach work. Um, I've never seen one. If somebody has one or knows of one, I'd certainly like to hear about it. But, but that was something that, that was available in the time. 
Leach said, you know what, it's, it's, it's not financially feasible for me to make entire cars. I'm just going to make the bodies. I can make sexy bodies that appeal to Hollywood stars. Then I can make sexy bodies that will appeal to wealthy people no matter where they live. Amazingly, the Peterson Automotive Museum's Leach is the only one known to survive. And even more special, it is in entirely original condition. The car has never been painted since it was new. The upholstery, the carpets are the same. The, the, the wood on the steering wheel it hasn't delaminated. It's still in beautiful condition. The tires are about the only thing that's been changed on the car since it was new. A California top is best defined as a removable hard top retrofitted to an otherwise open touring car. And some California tops are a little bit more luxurious than others. Uh, Leach had one of the best. Now, theoretically, this top could come off and you could put a folding fabric top on it. Um, but what Leach did is he provided for weather protection that most other California top manufacturers didn't. Because on a Leach car, you could pull up the side windows in the rear and in the front. Once the side curtains were down and the rear window was pulled up, you theoretically had a closed car. But then you push up the side windows. When you are ready to enjoy the open air again, you simply push back the sliding window. Once it was pushed up, it hid in a little pocket between the headliner of the car and the fabric top. Then you just push back the rear window. All of a sudden, you had a wide open touring car again. Uh, and ready to enjoy the California sun. Now the Leach wasn't only stylish with its wide open California top and helmet fenders and step plates. It also gave a little bit of a nod to safety because it had one of the very earliest turn signals operated by a little lever on the dashboard. When you come to the rear light, it said left, right, or stop. Uh, and it was one of the very first that was fitted to an automobile as an original piece of equipment and it does still run and drive. It's a very reliable car. We've even presented it at Pebble Beach in the unrestored preservation class. It's a very grand car, about the size of any SUV, uh, although not quite as sophisticated as its modern counterparts. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Peterson Automotive Museum Deep Dives. We'll see you next time.